Alice Williams. The election was a watershed for many reasons, not the least of which was the way voters accessed information about the candidates. The Pew Research Center reports only two in ten Americans read newspapers. Forty-four percent get their news from Facebook. Brianna Venosi looks at how, for better or worse, journalism's traditional role as fact checker has been eclipsed by technology. Vote from home, the meme reads, text your vote and avoid long lines. Perhaps the second hardest decision for voters after choosing a candidate this election cycle was wading through the gobs of information, misinformation and disinformation circulating on social networks. The issue is that it's competitive to be first and when you want to be first, sometimes you don't check everything carefully. Since the 2012 election, social platforms have become increasingly influential. A majority of U.S. adults, 62 percent, according to Pew Research Center, get their news via social networks. From a media professional's vantage point, that helped perpetuate the good, the bad, and the ugly in the presidential campaign. There's something that's called the viral circle, which is now mass media will cover what's going on in social media, and social media will in turn amplify and broadcast what's being said in mass media. So it's a faster and faster cycle that has a lot of benefits. Ideas can spread much, much faster. You can have a global movement or cause spread all around the world in a single day. But the flip side is misinformation or disinformation. It's it spreads faster as well. Take fake news sites like the WTOE5 News. It reported the Pope, yes, the Pope, had endorsed now president-elect Donald Trump. It was shared thousands of times within a few hours of being posted on Facebook. Or this fake Twitter account purporting to be former mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani, targeting the black and Hispanic vote on election day. For social media and today's audiences, newsworthiness is more about, you know, um, just rarity, uniqueness, or emotional appeal than um, factual information or prominence or significance of the issue itself. William Patterson University assistant professor Clive O says that was to the benefit of Donald Trump, who masterfully tapped into the emotions and frustrations of the American people, creating a viral presence. That is what social media communication really just boils down to, is trying to leave a strong impression in that short attention span of the social media audience that you have. And even with the best of intentions, misinformation spread. A tweet claiming voting machines in Philadelphia were rigged got 11,000 shares. But the whole thing was inaccurate, according to ProPublica's Election Land Project. And an election day guide distributed via Twitter from retailer Urban Outfitters wrongfully told voters they'd need to bring a voter registration card to cast a ballot. It's a new era of viral politics. And to get your ideas to to spread and be shared. It's not based on necessarily the information contained, but how well that information is packaged to be simple, surprising, and concrete. The website Adweek reports that on election day alone, there were 75 million tweets through 3 a.m. and more than 716 million Facebook interactions. And that matters when a candidate's actions may have less influence than how it reads on your social network feed. In the newsroom, Brianna Venosi, NJTV News.